Moramai, good morning. This is Judith Lay welcoming you to Manx Radio and to the podcast of this week's edition of At Your Service. Manx Radio. And on this Father's Day, it's quite appropriate that my guests this morning are a father and son. In late October next year, 2024, Reverend Steve Ingruel, Methodist minister based in Onken, plans to lead another pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Steve's been to the Holy Land many times and is passionate about helping others to discover and be inspired by the sites where Jesus lived, died and rose from the dead. On the 2024 pilgrimage, leadership of the group will be shared between Steve, his sister Ruth, who is a Baptist minister, and his father, Reverend Rod Ingruel, who, like Steve, is a very experienced leader, but despite their familiarity, is still deeply touched by the places they visit. Recently, I talked with Reverend Steve and Rod about the 2024 pilgrimage and was touched by the way they bring the different places to life in a way that almost makes their conversation a pilgrimage experience in itself. So, mixed with some music that I hope will give you opportunities to reflect on what's being said, let's make an armchair pilgrimage this morning. And if this inspires you to find out more about the actual pilgrimage, I'll tell you how you can do that later in the programme. Oh, Jesus be my guide and hold me to your side and I will love you to the end Oh thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto I always look forward to pilgrimages because I love taking a group of people there and opening a place to them and stepping back and watching what God decides to do. It will be an 11 day tour and within it there will be a couple of different places that are on offer. So if you've been with us before, we will be going to places that you haven't seen. And there's going to be three occasions throughout the 11 days, start, middle and end, where we're going to be able to offer an optional walk. So we're going to split the group to those who want to do a bit of a hike and those who want to continue journeying to the sites on coach. Now, Rod, it's equally special to you. Clearly a very, very special place for you as well, isn't it? That's right. The thing that is important for, for, for me is the fact that I've seen it change over the years. Um, when we first went there, I first took a pilgrimage there in 1992. And um, then we weren't able to go down the West Bank. We weren't able to go into Samaria. So when we were in Galilee in the north, when we wanted to travel down to Jerusalem, we had to travel down the Mediterranean coast and then swing back east up into Jerusalem. And so things were very different then. Things were very different from a, a security point of view. 
our guide at that time every morning would listen to the security radio to find out what was going on in the country. And uh, we knew that he had himself uh, an ankle holster with a gun in the holster for our security in those days. That was in the 1990s. Now it's very different. It's very much more peaceful. We are able to go down the West Bank. We're able to go into Samaria. Things are very different. And of course, the other thing is that there are so many new sites that have opened up. Over those last uh, 20 years, there are different sites archaeologically. Um, they've discovered new places. Magdala on the coast, which was the uh, hometown of Mary Magdalene. We, we're able to go there now. And that's very exciting because there in Magdala, there's uh, a first century uh, synagogue. We read in the scriptures that Jesus traveled uh, around Galilee and he preached in the various synagogues. Here's a synagogue that Jesus almost certainly preached in. It's there and it was only being discovered within the last 20 years. And so that's an exciting place to go to and to explore. Spring and autumn are very good times for being there uh, because you avoid the hottest time of the year. But as we know, living on the island, you can never predict weather one day from the next. So I have been there in the autumn in a heat wave where we've got off the plane into 40 plus degree heat. And I've been there in the spring where we've had snow in Bethlehem, in which was really quite something special to, uh, to witness. That. But that aside, we will be uh, flying from Luton, London Luton Airport, the rationale being that the times work really well. So we will be landing in Tel Aviv early afternoon, giving us plenty of time to get our luggage, to meet our guide, to get onto the coach, to travel to Galilee, to be at our Galilee hotel in time for dinner on the first day. Flying with El Al, who is the Israeli National Airlines. So from the moment you get on board, you've effectively stepped into Israel. It extends the experience and the food provided on the flight is Israeli food, it's kosher food and pretty tasty food as well. And that's the Thursday, the 24th of October 2024. We fly to Tel Aviv and transfer to Galilee. We're then in Galilee for the next four days before heading down to our second hotel in Jerusalem. Now, while we're in Galilee, we're going to be sailing on the Sea of Galilee we're going to be visiting the sites associated with Jesus' lakeside ministry. A lot of his teaching took place there. On the, the Sermon on the Mount, for example, took place there. And as uh, Rod mentioned, uh, the town of Magdala, which is a fantastic excavation. So we'll go to the lakeside sites. We also go into Nazareth. And not just the Church of the Annunciation, but as an added bonus when you travel with us, we take you to a smaller, less well-known excavation as well, which is the Convent of the Sisters of Nazareth, which is uh, excavations of what is believed to be, and in fact, about six months ago, uh, a leading biblical archaeologist has uh, validated this claim, believed to be the childhood home of Jesus and the Holy Family. So... On one side of the road, you have the Church of Annunciation, Mary's home, where the angel appeared to Mary. And on the other side of the road, presumed to be Joseph's home, where on return from Egypt, Joseph would have brought Mary and the uh, infant Jesus to that home. And there's a first century house. There's a first century tomb with a rolling stone as part of that excavations. It's an amazing place to be. We go up uh, to the Upper Galilee region, to Caesarea Philippi, and a beautiful nature reserve around the region of Dan. Dan being the capital of the Northern Kingdom at the time where you had the divided kingdom, the Northern Kingdom, the Kingdom of Israel, and the Southern Kingdom, the Kingdom of Judah. And Dan was uh, a capital in the time of the Northern Kingdom. And it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's set in, in beautiful natural scenery. And close to that Caesarea Philippi, the place where Peter makes his great declaration, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
We then journey, we journey to Jerusalem and uh, as Rod said we don't have to go down the Mediterranean coast these days because the security is that much better and so we travel down through central Palestine really to Samaria and to the place where Jacob's well still is and you can draw water from Jacob's well where Jesus had the conversation with the Samaritan woman and before we then enter Jerusalem we visit Shiloh which is a wonderful site just to the north of Jerusalem, a site where the tabernacle rested for 369 years, I think, before entering Jerusalem. And this is the place where Eli was and where Samuel was. And all of that wonderful story of Samuel hearing the voice of God and thinking that it was Eli and all of that takes place here at Shiloh and it's an amazing sight, an amazing sense of presence. We go to Jerusalem, we go on to the Temple Mount and obviously to the Western Wall. There's an optional, as Steve said earlier, an optional morning walk through Wadi Kelt down to Jerusalem. Often we read in the scriptures about Jesus going down from Jerusalem or down from Nazareth. Of course, you're down, down into the uh, Jordan Valley. And so it's a walk down Wadi Kelt to Jericho. And those who don't want to walk go by coach. Uh, and then we go to Bethany beyond the Jordan, by the Jordan River, where John baptised people before uh, Jesus revealed himself or before God revealed Jesus. And then on the Wednesday, we go to the Dead Sea regions, to Masada. And we go up Masada, this great uh, citadel fortress almost. And there's the option to walk up the snake path. Not many people do it. It's very hot, but some people do it. And most people go by the cable car. And we'll go from Masada to the Qumran Caves, where the famous Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And then on to the Dead Sea, where we got a chance to float in the Dead Sea. So uh, that's the Dead Sea regions. And then on the Thursday, we spend the day much nearer to Jerusalem. Uh, we go to Bethphage, the village where Palm Sunday starts, the procession starts from Bethphage, and we go down the Mount of Olives, and we spend time in the Garden of Gethsemane. If anybody pushed me to say, where's your favourite place in Israel? Uh, it's the Church of All Nations, which is in the Garden of Gethsemane. I usually leave the group at the top with Stephen uh, looking after them and nip down for a special half hour in the Church of All Nations in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then we go from there by coach across to uh, St. Peter's Church in the Pool of Bethesda and the Via Dolorosa. Just uh, picking up on that, it's one of the real joys of having invited my father to join me in leading pilgrimages is that we very quickly grow to know the places that are special to each other. And as Rod just shared, uh, the Church of All Nations in Gethsemane is one that is special to him. So we have the flexibility and he'll say to me, Steve, I'll see you down the bottom and I know where he'll be. And likewise, for me, one of the places in Jerusalem is St. Peter's Church, the church in Galicantu, St. Peter in Galicantu, which is uh, believed to be the site of Caiaphas's house and where Jesus was brought before Caiaphas for questioning. And there's uh, some steps that go back to the Roman first century times that connect the church at Peter and Gallicantu 
through the Kidron Valley to the Garden of Gethsemane. So that's the journey that Jesus would have taken under arrest before appearing before Caiaphas. So in that place, I will be more absent from the group and Rod will be watching over them as I spend my time in that place. It is by no means just you showing these places to other people. They are still incredibly moving and powerful for you both. Oh, absolutely, Judith. Absolutely. There were places that were so special and remain so special and places where God takes us by surprise. And that's wonderful also. One of the special things that is going to happen next year that we're going to be joined by my daughter Stephen's sister she's training for the Baptist ministry and uh, she came with us on our last trip and she will be helping us with leadership this time so there'll be three Reverend Ingalls together uh, leading this pilgrimage in in 24. One of the things that has been really special for me over the last 12 years since leaving college has been developing of relationship with my dad to a point where we're not just as father and son and we're not just brothers in Christ together either. Mm. We are colleagues as well. And I was never quite sure how that was going to work, actually, as I phoned my father, knowing that he hadn't been to the Holy Land for probably uh, years, 15, 15 years. 15. And uh, Dad was able to encourage some people from the church that he was in at the time to come, and he then joined us as the leader. It was a very intense experience for me, but a wonderful experience for the group. Because so much had changed in the land over those 15 years, I was looking to Dad's past experience, but also there were things that were very different that we, I knew we could do that Dad hadn't been aware of because things had changed, things had opened up, security was different. And I think we, we both came for, away from those 10 days with, it, it doesn't go too far to say, a deep respect for the way each other works, recognising we work differently, but also we work in a complementary way in what we offer to the group. we're still staying in Jerusalem Hotel we take a, a coach to Bethlehem just in itself that journey is a bit of an eye-opener people don't realize the distances involved between Jerusalem and Bethlehem and actually what that journey is but there in Bethlehem we go to the shepherd's fields which is a very poignant place for me as we often sing there it came upon the midnight clear uh, with its line that neath the angel's strain have rolled two thousand years of wrong and in order to get to Bethlehem, we've seen something of that as we go through the checkpoints with the separation wall and, of course, the church and the nativity, the birthplace of Christ. And we then have a third hotel 
in this trip. Our last full day, we journey from Jerusalem to Joppa and we'll actually be staying overnight in Joppa before flying back to Luton from Tel Aviv. But en route to Joppa, we will visit the Israel Museum, visit the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's a fantastic model of the city as it would have been in the time of Jesus. We'll also stop at Emmaus and remember those uh, post-resurrection appearances of Jesus with his disciples. And there's a chance for people, if they want to walk the Emmaus Trail, then they can do so, and we'll collect them up again at the other end. Um, Those who want to remain with the coach can remain with the coach and spend a slightly longer time exploring the old city of Joppa, where Peter resided and was uh, commanded by God to go to Cornelius, and he refused, and he has this uh, amazing vision of the food descending from heaven and the the voice, do not call what I have made clean, unclean, and really the challenge for Peter about the gospel going to the Gentiles, which is a great story for us to finish our pilgrimage with, because if the gospel didn't go to the Gentiles, it would never have come to us, and we wouldn't be in that place exploring and having the experiences. I am straight for all the despairing. Thank you, Reverend Rod and Reverend Steve Ingrell, talking about some of the sacred sites of the Holy Land. And Rod and Steve asked me to make it very clear that this pilgrimage is open to people of all faiths and none. Everyone is warmly welcomed, and all the times of prayer and reflection are entirely optional to join in or not, as each person feels is most appropriate for them. As you might imagine, predicting exact prices for a journey taking place over a year in the future is difficult due to fluctuating exchange rates. But in the details of the pilgrimage that are available now, there are four different prices that will give you a good guideline of cost. And of course, the big advantage of considering a pilgrimage so far in the future is that it allows time to save for it. If you'd like to know more about the pilgrimage that the three reverends, Rod, Steve and Ruth Ingruel, will be leading in late October 2024, there are three ways to do it. You can visit the tour operator's website and see an illustrated flip book of the whole itinerary. Just go to www.maranatha.co.uk forward slash Holy Land Pilgrimage 2024 forward slash. And that's all lowercase with no spaces between the words. And Maranatha is spelled M-A-R-A-N-A 
T-H-A, maranatha.co.uk. You can give Steve a call on 674 464 or, probably the best option, you can come along to a very relaxed and informal information evening in Onken Methodist Church a week on Wednesday. That's June the 28th and it starts at half past seven. There'll be lots of detailed information about the pilgrimage and, most importantly, a chance to talk with people who've actually been on one of Steve's previous pilgrimages and there'll be ample opportunity to ask any questions you may have. And now it's time to take a look at our notice board and we begin with several special services today where everyone will be made most welcome. Balagheri Methodist Chapel at St Mark's invite you to their all-age anniversary Sunday this afternoon at three o'clock. It's a family-friendly service led by Jen Casson and featuring the Laxey Puppets with an afternoon tea to follow. Also this afternoon at 3 o'clock, Glen May Chapel have an anniversary and strawberry tea with a retiring collection for the work of the chapel. This evening, Sandy Gate Methodist Chapel on Jerby Road will celebrate their 161st chapel anniversary with a service at half past six tonight. It'll be led by Mrs Pauline Corlett and there's a warm welcome for everyone who's ever had any connection with Sandy Gate over the years to come and share in this special anniversary celebration. Also this evening, the Mariners' Choir will be in Abbeyland's Chapel for a service starting at half past six, at which Mrs Marinda Farger will preach, Gareth Moore will be the organist and Gary Corkill the soloist. And as usual, there'll be a generous supper and community hymn singing after the service. Looking to the week ahead, and on Tuesday the 20th, there's a coffee morning in Port Erin Methodist Church, and you're invited to pop in for a cuppa and a chat between 10 and half past 11. The season of summer concerts is up and running in St Thomas's Church here in Douglas, just off the promenade near the Gaiety Theatre. They invite you to an hour of popular music with different artists to entertain each Wednesday evening. The concert starts at quarter to eight and entertaining you this Wednesday will be the Lonvane Ladies' Choir conducted by Christine Brugazzi. And while submission and light refreshments are free, a little donation to the collection as you leave would be much appreciated. And we finish with a look ahead to next weekend. Bride Methodist Chapel have a coffee morning in Ramsey Town Hall next Saturday morning, the 24th, open from 10am. And also next Saturday, and also in Ramsey, there'll be a strawberry fair. This'll be in a marquee in the grounds of Our Lady Star of the Sea, Roman Catholic Church, on Queen's Promenade in Ramsey, next Saturday, the 24th, open from noon until half past four. It's just £7.50 for a full strawberry tea, cakes, sandwiches and a pot of tea, plus fun and games for all ages, a raffle and homemade cakes and jams for sale. And last but by no means least, next Sunday evening, the Mariners Choir will be in Selby Methodist Church for a service starting at the usual time of half past six. Mrs Brenda Kinnish will preach and again, as usual, the service will be followed by supper and community hymn singing. And that's all that we have time for now but I'll be back tonight at nine o'clock to open the door to our virtual late lounge for sundown. A mix of easy listening music and a little bit of nostalgia to round off your day. I'd love you to join me if you can. And so, until whenever we meet again, this is Judith saying thank you for listening and I wish you and those you love a blessed and happy week and a very good morning. Station